The full mount position is one of the worst positions you can find yourself in on the ground. You're highly vulnerable to strikes, ground and pound, as well as submissions, most likely the arm bar. And the thing is, no one technique or escape or even set of escapes will get you out of this position against a qualified opponent. You need practice methodology to be able to do that. You need to know what to do from the top position, how to stabilize the position, how to counter the escapes, and your partner needs to work with you on that. And then you need to also learn all the techniques to escape from the bottom position, but most importantly, you need to learn how to do them in real time, problem solving against resistance. So in this video, we're gonna show you everything you need to know about the full mount position, exactly how to behave from the top position, your different attacks that are available, and how to stabilize the position. And from the bottom, we're gonna cover all the most common escapes, but we're also gonna see how to put them in combinations. And we're gonna give you a very specific practice methodology to make sure that you can acquire the skills of either stabilizing or attacking from, and most importantly, escaping from, full mount position, so you can improve faster. So we're gonna cover all that in this video. Stay tuned. Hi, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ, and this video is all about the full mount position. So we're gonna divide this into three sections, starting what to do from the top, so you know what you're up against, and your partner can execute the techniques correctly, the appropriate reactions, from the top, then the escapes from the bottom, and then third and perhaps most importantly, the exact practice methodology that you should follow to be able to develop those techniques under pressure. So starting with the mount on top. So this happens most likely, it could happen off of a takedown, most likely it's gonna be off of a guard pass. So she got around my legs. I prefer to have my legs in between her and I. She got around them, however she did that in a guard pass, and now she has established the full mount position. So this is a very bad position for me, a very good position for her. Now, the first thing she needs to be able to do in the top mount position is stabilize the position. So she needs to play between this regular mount position, the high mount position, if she can get higher underneath my armpits. Here, this is a more offensive position, which offers more opportunities for attack, either submission or striking base. And she needs to alternate between the low mount position as well, where she's hooking my legs and perhaps basing out with her arms on either side. A few more things that are important to consider for stabilizing of the position in the low mount, especially if you're dealing with a self-defense or law enforcement situation, your goal is just to hold the position. You wanna be making use of the underhooks as well as the posture breaks to flatten your opponent as well as weaken them by turning their chin and misaligning their spine. So as we're gonna see in the next session, defensively, the bottom practitioner's job is really to make their body in a ball and regain a sound defensive grappling position. So by hiding their chin, making their shoulders round and balling up and moving whatever part of their body they can move in order to regain some type of guard. So offensively, if your goal is really to hold the position, you wanna be always looking for underhooks. So swimming your arm underneath the armpit in order to anchor yourself to the position and also expose the elbow, which eventually can lead to many variations of the arm bar but also striving to turn the opponent's head left or right by using your other shoulder or also by using your forehead. So anytime uh, we saw this in more detail with more examples in the five basic principles of grappling, anytime you can affect the opponent's posture is a great thing for you. And defensively, obviously you don't wanna let that happen to you. So making use of the underhook, making use of the posture break to anchor yourself to the position in the low mount at the same time as you're using the hooks with the legs and defensively, you wanna fight that in order to regain some type of guard. You're gonna see that more in detail in the next section. The other thing that she needs to be able to do is to go to a chair sit on either side. So making sure that she can shift her weight, especially if I start bridging, she can shift her weight here to one side so she doesn't get off balance by my bridging attempt, and she's progressing towards my back. So let's see it again from the other side here. So I go here, I go like this, and then she shifts her weight where her foot is in front of my hips and she is behind my back. One more on the other side. Here I bridge and she goes chair sit like so. So hiding this foot and shifting her weight to the side so she's not all balanced by my bridge. The other thing that she needs to be able to do is do the windshield wiper transition. This is a very good drill for you guys. Being able to go from side to side, knee on belly on either side without exposing the legs. So let's go with the windshield wiper transition. So she goes here and she goes to one side here and I'm gonna be trying to grab her legs as she does so. 
So go here. And I shouldn't be able to grab her legs too easily if she does this technique correctly. She wants to drop her hips. Here, go again slowly, pause in the middle. Here, the knees are pinching both sides of my hips and you can see I don't have access to her feet in this situation. So she's really keeping her feet above my hip line. So when she does the transition, I can't grab the feet, which I would want to do. If she does it incorrectly, do again. Here, and she lets her feet hang out. Here, I can gain control of one of her feet and during that transition, escape the mount position to re-guard. So this is a helpful drill for you guys from the top position. Here, windshield wiper, side to side. Let's do it again. Here, always with control and eventually with more speed as well. Going to knee on belly on either side and then finalizing in the mount on the side of her choice. So here, back to the mount. So this is a very important transition. So that's how she uses the position to maintain her control on top. The other thing she wants to do on a tactical level is stay on the offensive. She got to this great position, she wants to progress her attack and stay on the offense. She can do this with strikes and submissions and a combination of both would be most effective. So the first, the most simplest thing is just to rain down punches. With no control, she just punches down here. Remember that she's coming down with her body weight. Here, so I want to protect myself against those strikes and she can definitely create damage like so. Now for a more controlling approach, she can also grip fight and go for the cross wrist pin technique, which is very effective. So if she can pin one of my arms over here, now she can strike with the other one and I only can block at a cross here. So she can come down with elbows and hooks and my ability to block is limited for the time that she's controlling that arm. So obviously I want to fight that and regain the control with my arms, but it's a good uh, tool to inflict damage from the top. The other thing she can do for control and ground and pound from top mount is hide one of my arms with her body Hook behind my face here, and now this arm can't really defend, and she's pushing my face to the side, and now she can strike with that free arm, and I'm in a very bad spot, so I'm really gonna need to do everything I can to free this arm, perhaps get this one in front, but she does a good job, she can hold that position long enough to create some damage. So that's striking base. The other thing that she needs to be looking for is submissions. So that's why we tell to our students all the time, keep your elbows connected to your ribs, because if you do not, you are giving the opportunity for the person on top to do the arm bar. So I need to do both. I need to go 10 strikes and the submissions at the same time. So she might be raining on strike. I need to protect myself. Keep my elbows tucked and my chin tucked at the same time, striving perhaps to try to grab her hands and control them. If she gets on top over here, now see she's gotten behind my shoulder. She's connected her hip bone to my shoulder and I'm in grave danger of an arm bar in this case. So there's two main variations she can use to finish this arm bar. She can get her knee in front of my chin here and do the mounted finish. She breaks my grip here and perhaps finishes it here. Or she can get the full cross face leg and then dismount and that's gonna be a grip fight. She's gonna try to separate my hands here. Eventually she does. And then she can do a variation of finishes from the side over here. The other thing that she needs to be able to do from the top is to be ready to transition her position either forward or backward. And in the case of the full mount, it's gonna be either going to the back or going back to side control. So if I make the mistake of exposing my back as I'm trying to escape and she succeeds in getting behind me, perhaps even if I go to turtle and try to escape that way, she needs to be ready to sink in her hooks and then sink in her choke and then finish it from here. So we're gonna see this more in detail, back control, offense and defense in our back control video. Subscribe if you have not already. The other thing that she needs to be able to do is be ready to transition back to side control. So let's say I get too far into my escape and I start getting control of her leg. Well, she might decide to just go to side control, knee on belly, and then back to side control if nothing else works. That way, at least she maintains her position past the guard. So you want to practice all that and we'll see how to do this in detail in the next section of this video. First, let's look at now the escapes from the bottom and knowing what she wants to do from the top, it's going to make it a lot more effective. So, the first most common escape from the bottom is the elbow escape. Now, this is really having to do with the position or the posture on the ground. In this case, I cannot physically connect my knees to my elbows, and that's a problem. We saw this in the seven basic grappling postures in the supine position. I wanna have my knees connected to my chest and my elbows connected to my knees. This gives me a more offensive and defensive position from the bottom. Now, well, how I'm gonna do that, in this case, I wanna frame on her hip, keeping her low, so I don't want her too high in this case. I want to goaltend the strikes, which are coming as well, so I need to protect myself and perhaps keep her off balance so I'm not taking too much damage during this transition. And I want to be able to bring my elbow inside her leg and then physically connect my elbow to my knee over here to gain some level of control of her leg. In this case, once I have that, then I have options. I can adjust my hips here, start going back 
in terms of uh, having a garden place. In this case, I can go all the way back to my feet if I choose to, or I can go back on the offense in the bottom position, depending on what your strategy is in that situation. So again, elbow escape. I'm going here. My goal is simply to connect my elbow to my knee. So create space here, make your pose, keep your out of balance, protect against the strikes, and that's elbow on the inside. Elbow slides all the way to the knee, and from there, Try to escape and get the other leg in, and now I have my full guard in place, in this case it's a butterfly guard. Now a useful variation on the elbow escape is sometimes I can use my legs to gain some level of control on her leg, especially if she leaves it dangling behind. So again, goaltending the strikes, keep her off balance. If I push this down, maybe her foot is dangling down here, I can grab it with my heel and then gain here a triangle and go back here facing her, escaping my hips and replacing my guard that way. But again, it's easy for her to counter that if she knows what she's doing, because when I start going to the side here, she can go to the chair sit position. Even if I have my frame in place with my elbow, now her leg is protected. So I'm gonna have to transition to something else. Another very common escape that we see taught all the time is the bridge and roll escape. So for this one, I'm gonna have to control the arm on the side where I want to bridge her. So there's a variety of grips that are possible. I can go for a two on one grip over here, a double wrist grip over here, baseball bat grip. I can go and hold it over here. I can over wrap it like so. And I wanna control that arm and control the ankle on the same side. From here, I wanna bridge and get her over her base. Now, see what she's doing here is she's posting with the other arm. And this would be the correct reaction. In this case, I can keep on running here and going further where she can't follow. That's one option. Or I can also use the follow up here, having her weight on one side to now follow that up with an elbow escape and shrimping out so that I can insert my knee since her weight is now less on me and I forced her to put the weight on that side. The other variation of the bridge and roll escape that works quite well is to start on one side but then sharply go to the other side right after. So let's say I'm gonna go for control on one side, over here she's gonna adjust, I'm gonna gain control on the other side and then follow up with a roll on the other side so I can use that to escape the position. Here, the bridge and roll. The highest variation of this is to go in one direction here and then, sh and then controlling and going in the other immediately. And here, we're back on top. We want immediately to assume a correct grappling position. So I want to start controlling and connecting my knee to my elbow over here so I'm not vulnerable to a submission from the top. So this is the bridge and roll left and right variation. The other very useful escape is the knee insert escape. So for this one, I need to force her hands to the mat here. So I can bridge and knee. It might already be the case as well if she goes for a low mount position like so. Now I wanna place my hands on her hips and elevate my knee. So I'm, I'm constantly crunching with my abs and keeping her high. At the same time, keeping her low with my hand position. At this point, I wanna be kicking up with my legs and forcing up with my hands as I'm crunching my abs in order to eventually insert either one or both knees in this position. From here, we're in an open guard situation. I might be able to regard completely. I might be able to go on the offense and I might be able to get up. There's different things that can happen from that position. I see a couple variations. Here, knee insert. Sometimes here, I'm able to get my knees in and I can kick her backwards over here and wind up to some form of butterfly guard. Sometimes I get only one knee in, here and I send bing here and I get one knee in, here and the other leg is gonna be on the outside, I can get a frame with this foot, she's gonna fight it obviously, I can get to some type of X guard, I can regard completely, and then eventually work my way back up to my feet. We're gonna see this more in detail in the guard video. Now the main counter to this escape is gonna be the windshield wiper transition that we saw earlier. So as I start creating space here and getting my legs in, she wants to transition to the side here, controlling my hip, controlling my face. Now she's in the knee on belly position. She can choose to strike from there or go back to the full mount position. So again, I do the escape here when she wipe her. She's back on top and she can top spin, have to get behind me, get back to the mount, and now I'm gonna have to work some more from here. So moving on, leg grab escape. This one is when she gets to a high mount position. So in this case, if I didn't do a good job of blocking her and keeping my elbows tight, which I should, at the same time as I'm goaltending the strikes, but she got to a high position here. She's very uh, offensive on my upper body and my arms are in danger, but you can notice I have more mobility now with my hips and legs. So I'm gonna use what I can in order to start gaining some level of control with my legs. Sometimes I could bring my knees in and my feet and start 
I, it helps if I can have the arms in the armpits, but that's not always the case. I can have some type of a frame on her body or whatnot. And I try to roll back. Then I want to go to the side and roll over my shoulder, perhaps insert my knee over here and start escaping the position from here. If I have control of the leg, I can use that to get up. So in order to be able to do that, you need to be able to do a back roll without momentum. So simply from your back here, bringing your legs in and going over your shoulder in order to back roll. So this is a good drill for you to develop the ability to do this escape. It will become available sometimes and you need to be ready for that. The last escape is the turtle escape. So this is when I'm taking a lot of damage. I'm really getting hit a lot and I'm starting to perhaps get a little fuzzy and lose consciousness. I might decide to give away my back and take a chance of escaping the bottom turtle position instead of keep on getting hit. Let's say you know that the other escapes work and let's say she's very powerful and very heavy and very stable. I gotta have to do something. So in this case, I'm gonna turn my back away, but immediately the key transition here is getting my elbows under me, getting my knees under me, and goaltending the seat belt, the elbow exposure, as well as the hooks at the same time. So now she got both hooks in, I can perhaps start escaping one hook, getting my legs back in the middle, so I'm getting my elbow on the inside. Eventually, now we're in a different situation. I'm gonna see this more in detail in the back control video. Once again, when all else fails, going to turtle, I'm taking too much damage, I'm getting hit, I can't get out of this, none of the other escapes have worked. I can't even protect myself by protecting my face here. She crosses at me, she keeps on hitting me. I wanna very sharply turn the turtle, get my legs underneath me, go tend the seat belt, go tend the choke, try to fight off the hooks as best I can, and then I'm gonna have to fight out of this position. So we're gonna see that more in detail in the back control video. All right, now the most important part of this video, once you know the technique, so definitely the techniques are important to know, the principles are important to know, you always wanna to strive to get that elbow to knee connection, you wanna form a ball with your body when you're on the bottom, and you wanna stay active and go from side to side and combine those escapes. Now in order to be able to do so, this is how you wanna practice it. So let's say I'm a beginner and she wants to help me practice my escaping techniques, this is how it's gonna play out. So if I'm on bottom, and let's say I just started, I'm really, uh, on the conscious competence level for each one of the escapes, let's say I go for the elbow escape. And at first she's gonna let me do it. So she's just gonna not do it for me, but she's gonna kind of let me connect my knee to here and then escaping my hips. And she's gonna get, let me get that technique. Now, it's important to distinguish that she's not actually doing it for me. So meaning she's not pushing her leg herself. She's not helping me and getting her leg out of the way. She's letting me do it. Okay, there's an important distinction. But now, as I get a little bit better, she's gonna fight me a little bit on it. So, let's say just getting the control. Here, getting my elbow on the inside, she might not let me, right? She might expose the elbow a little bit. So if I get there, now she might go for some type of position where I can't get it so easily. But then, she, if I'm just starting out, she might also let me in this position, instead of getting her knee, her foot all the way here and not letting me, she might still have her foot hanging out over here and eventually let me get the knee on the inside to escape the hip and regard. So now let's say I'm comfortable with each one of those escapes individually. We're now gonna free play this situation and she's gonna give me an appropriate amount of resistance where I'm eventually able to escape the position but most likely not on the first try. So that's a good rule of thumb. You want your partner to be challenged but also being able and successful to execute this desired outcome. So here it goes, let's say I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. So here I'm bridging side to side. She's opening my elbow, she's reminding me now that I need to keep my elbows tucked. Maybe she ground and pounds a little bit and she reminds me that I need to protect myself against those attacks. I go for an elbow escape, here she's gonna transition and now I'm gonna force to be, maybe do another one and now I finally escape. So again, I'm going side to side, again, being conscious of those strikes. Remember, she's just touching with those strikes. Even if I don't block, she can, put power and speed into it, but stop it at the last moment. So it's not dangerous for me. And I'm not in danger and I don't feel scared of getting hurt when we're practicing. Safety first. So again, I'm working my escapes. She transitions. Here, she gets to this side. I'm forced to follow up. Here, I start escaping, getting my legs back in. And now I have successfully regarded. One more time, let's say I'm getting better and she really wants to increase the level of resistance. Now she's gonna force me to be even more aggressive on my escape. So going side to side and keeping me extended. And I keep my elbows tight and goaltending against those strikes. Get rid of the cross face, protect against the strikes. Keep my hips active, trying to get the legs separated. Keeping my hips moving 
getting control of her legs, getting another hook. She's back sticking, and oh no, she's back in. I use the momentum and finally escape the position. Now that's also possible the other way around. Let's say I have more experience and I want to help my partner develop the ability to maintain the top mount position. I'm going to use progressive resistance on my escapes to help her do her transition. So let's say she's in the top mount and she doesn't yet know how to optimally hold the position. So I might be causing problems for her and reminding her, okay, here, there's too much space. You want to address that. So yeah, here, bring your foot in. Very good. And now I'm going to do the other side. And here, say, he, here, you're off balance. Too much space here. You want to close this. Yeah, going back here. Very good. Stay heavy on your hips. Good. Pinch with your legs. Don't let me get my elbows on the inside. Good. Stay on the offense. Yeah, that's it. Keep opening up the elbows and land strikes. Good. I might test her control as well and offer her the opportunity to strike. Here, and stop the strikes at the surface. Go as fast as you can control them. Here, and I can offer blocking as well. Try to get control. Good. Stay on the offense. Very nice. Try to get higher. As soon as my elbow opens, try to get, yeah, I kind of get behind my shoulder and I'm gonna make it problems for her and push her back down. Again, I'll do a variation of this case. Maybe I start controlling her arm and say, fight this, fight this. Don't let me have this. Yeah, that's it, fight it, very good. Now fight this one. Don't let me have, okay, adjust your base, very good. Here, don't let me get that elbow in. Get that leg in, yes, good. And again, the other side. Now we gotta, yeah, windshield wiper, you got it. Very good, now don't let me escape the hips. Transition, control the hips. Yes, good, now another windshield wiper. She's back in the mouth. So you can see how this plays out. It's really going at the speed at which your partner is able to apply the techniques that they know, and then just a little bit faster. So you develop the ability to execute those techniques. And there you have it, guys. That's the full mount position, or at the very least, a good introduction to it. What to do from the top, you definitely want to play between the positions that are available to you. Uh, the regular mount, the low mount, the high mount. You want to be able to transition side to side with the chair sit. You want to be making use of the windshield wiper transition. And remember, if you get to the full mount, you want to stay on the offensive with ground and pound attacks, either just raining down punches or elbows using your body weight, remembering the importance of control as well. You always want to apply safety first and definitely don't hurt your partners in training. This would be counterproductive. You definitely also need to be able to use control with your attacks. So isolating a wrist with a cross wrist pin and landing your strikes that way. You got the mounted beat down position as well where you can expose the face. And then keep in mind that you're always trying to go if the arm bar becomes available, you wanna take advantage of that, be able to execute the arm bar from top, or at least practice with people that are going for an arm bar so you know that you need to defend it when you're just starting out. And from the top, you need to be ready to transition to the back if it becomes available, as well as go down to side control in order to prevent the person from regarding completely. From the bottom position, we saw the five main escapes. The most important of which is the elbow escape, simply regaining that elbow to knee connection to gain control of one of your partner's legs and then regarding from there, facing them again. We have the classic bridge and roll escape as well, which most often you'll need to adjust in order to make it work against a more skilled opponent. So you can go the left and right variation. You can keep on with the running bridge and cover more distance to get them over their base. And at the very least, you'll be most likely able to use the bridge and roll escape to set up the elbow escape as a nice follow-up. Uh, we saw also the knee insert variation where you can use the principle of vibration, getting your knees inside the guard to land in some type of butterfly guard. It's also possible to land with the one knee insert and get the other leg over and use that position to escape or even go back on the offensive. We're gonna explore that more in detail in future videos. We also have the leg grab escape, so simply rolling back and grabbing some level of control with your legs, then use that with a back roll momentum to escape the position. And then as a last resort, you definitely want to be able to go to turtle position where you're taking too much damage and none of your escapes work from bottom full mount. Be careful though, in that situation, you definitely want to fight off the hooks, fight off the choke and the seat belt, so you have better chance of escaping the back. But remember, that's a risk that you are taking because it wasn't working in the previous position. Now, most importantly, what you really want to retain from this video is the practice methodology. I think that's essential to every aspect of your martial arts training to be able to progress optimally is using the concept of progressive resistance. 
Yes, you need to be able to do the techniques on your own first. You need to be able to do them with a semi-cooperating partner at first. So they're not offering really any resistance. They're letting you execute the technique, although they're not doing it for you. But then very shortly thereafter, they need to be increasing the resistance incrementally so you learn and develop the ability to problem solve in real time. And that's what fighting is. Dealing with violence, dealing in a fighting and a hand-to-hand -hand combat engagement, you're gonna have to solve equations quickly and take decisions in real time on which technique to apply with what timing and what direction and in which order. In order to develop that skill, you need to start slow at a speed where you can process the information which isn't yet ingrained in you because you haven't practiced it that much. So you wanna acquire those techniques and then lightly. Person offers resistance, you make decisions. You follow up from one escape to the other because no single escape will get you out of the full mount position against a even remotely qualified opponent. It needs to be a combination of escapes and it needs to be a skill. Of, you need to develop the skill of escaping the bottom mount position and that's how you do it. So if you are with people who have just as much experience as you and that's not a lot of experience, Take the time to learn what to do from the top and go very slow on both sides, help each other develop those skills and you both can grow together. If you have the opportunity to practice with somebody who has more experience, that's even better. As long as they're inclined to help you progress and adapt the level of resistance that they're doing to help you improve. So keep you in the sweet spot where you are challenged but still successful eventually. So that's the concept of progressive resistance. We're gonna expand on that in future videos. If you have found this video helpful, leave us a comment below, tell us how this has helped you and if any aspect of this was new to you. And if you have not already, subscribe to our channel right now. We're really excited. We're getting into the grappling, introduction to the grappling positions with a partner right now. So we have much more good stuff coming your way. And we'll also expand applying these same principle-based fighting and concept of training to your wrestling training as well as striking training so that you can be a complete effective martial artist and have a basic understanding and a good understanding eventually of all the aspects of hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's what we do here at Effective Martial Arts. So it's been a pleasure as always signing off. Patrick Fulop here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Point Claire, West Island, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.